Yeah. You know, I, I looked at the video that I did the jumping thing. I couldn't find myself. I think <laughs> I edited it out. I, I, I don't got my iPad right Who put 666 up there? Yoshida, I can tell it's your writing. What? <laughs> 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 oh boy, that was close. Hey, that was close. <laughs> that was close. Hey, there's an interesting tidbit about 666. <laughs> oh, this is a Halloween thing. If you take the first seven prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, thirteen, seventeen, seventeen, and you square, and you square each one. Wait, you showed us this last time. And then you add them up. You know what you get? Six, six, six. Did you know if you add six, six, five, and one, you get six, six, six? Not the Satan, Mr. Park. Was it first Satan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't it have the first Satan? Hey, wait a minute. There was no homework. <laughs> <laughs> why were you even taking out this <laughs> I knew it. I could get it. <laughs> it's on the video. Do you want to stitch into my phone? But yeah. Where is she? Is she in class? Yeah. Okay, today we start chapter 9. Now, chapter 9. I believe this is the only section we're going to use the book. Because uh, two other sections we have worksheets. My worksheets are better than this. Sounds like Mr. Book. Okay, so today we're doing sequences. Now we did this last year. We spent the whole chapter on this at PCH. So this is a this is a should be an easy review. Oh, taking the phone. Okay, now the, what are the two sequences we learned in algebra two? Geometric, arithmetic. Geometric. 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 Now, in arithmetic, see, okay, this is a good review right before the AMC too, because I'm pretty sure you're doing a lot. Of in fact, did you guys even start doing the practice problems that are on the website? Yeah. The practice problems? An arithmetic sequence is a sequence that has a common difference. You keep adding the same number every time, like two, five. 8, 11, 14, da, da, da. That oh, is N minus 1, D. Geometric <laughs> sequence is something like sequence that. where you keep multiplying right. by the same number. We call that the common ratio. So like... What? Why are you here? 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, da, da, da. And we have formulas for each of them, right? A1, N minus 1. So for an arithmetic sequence, yeah. the explicit formula is A sub N is equal to A sub 1 plus N minus 1 D. Bam. Does yeah. that sound familiar? I was correct. Yeah. No. For a geometric <laughs> sequence, the explicit formula is A sub N equal A sub 1 R to the N minus 1. Per. So like for example, what if I told you, what is the 1,000th term of this sequence? What are you going to do? Just keep writing until you get to the 1,000 Yes, and check. Yes. Yes. I, I have no doubt. Let's try. What is, where's the, what's the department that have the, the, the pre-made notes or anything? Arc, yeah. Strike one, arc. Anyway, so what, what's the formula for this sequence? A sub 1, what is A sub 1? 2. two. First one, 2, plus n minus 1, and what is the common difference? What is the number three. I keep adding? 3. three. three. Simplify it. I don't know. And remember I... Oh, yeah. 3n <laughs> three three n minus n 1. one. Now, since we are honors, I would expect us to just Thank look at these numbers and go straight to there. How, how do you get this? Yeah, you adjust or something. Because yeah. the common, look, look, look what's happening. The 3 gets distributed oh, to the n, so you know that I have 3n, and then you just adjust it. Oh. If the common difference is 3, you just write 3n, and then adjust. Oh. Matthew's like if I plug in 1 for n, if I plug in 1 for n, what do you get? You get 3. What do I have to do to Wait, 3? You get 2. You got to subtract 1. Wait, this is Matthew's secret. It's on video. This is not a secret. <laughs> My dog knows this. <laughs> Which one? Like, spot? Both? No, spot. Juggernaut's dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you named them Juggernaut? Okay, now what about this one? Here's a geometric sequence. Look in your job. How do you write the explicit formula for that? A sub 1 is the first term times the common ratio, two. which is 2 to the n minus 1. It's easy to remember these formulas because they both have n minus 1 and a sub 1 in it. It's easy. 
Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting there. Oh, we got it. We, the lead team. Everything that's in this <laughs> section here, we already learned in PCH last year. It's just oh, a matter of what can you remember. Oh, just just the the oh, oh, no. No, this is, these are called explicit formulas. So like if you want to find the 100th term, you simply plug in 100, right? If I want to find the fifth term, you plug in 5. But there are other ways that sequences can be defined. Does it. this look familiar? A sub 1 equal 2. A sub n equals a sub n minus, minus one, one plus seven. seven. Oh. seven. oh no. I remember this. Oh, is this is called from? recursive. Oh, yeah. A sequence is defined recursively here. So, for example, what are the first five terms of this sequence? Well, duh, the first term is two. Nine. Nine. To get any term in the sequence, you take the previous term and add seven to Nine. it. Nine. So how do you get the thirteen? I don't know after that. <laughs> 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 da, da, da. <laughs> and then what if I were to ask you to find the 1,000th term? Oh, well, got it right. Like just yeah. keep on going. Yeah. Or should I write the explicit formula and just plug in 1,000? Yeah. Nah, yeah. just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> so I would write the explicit formula. What's the common difference? Seven. 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 So minus put five. n and then minus adjust. Minus five. No. Oh, I see it. You were here one minute ago. Wait, seven? If the common difference is seven, you write seven. Yeah. N. You write seven n, and you Only want one. the first term to be two. So if I plug in one for n, what's seven times one? Seven. 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 What do I have to do to seven to get two? Subtract five. Yeah. Are you Are you sad that it's not? Okay. Let's. We got to do another one. Uh, a sub one equal three. Are we watching a movie Shh. today? We're done already. A sub n. <laughs> Okay, now, here's, a, here's something that's going to come up tonight. A sub n plus 1 is equal to uh, 2 a sub n minus 1. Now, does it bother you that, it shouldn't bother you because all that matters is this subscript is one bigger than that one, right? This means to get any term in the sequence, you take the previous term, multiply it by 2, and then subtract 1. So, what are the first few terms of this sequence? 3 is the first term. How do you get the second term? Multiply it by 2 and subtract 1. 5. Again. 9. Again. 7. Again. Okay. Encore. 65. Yeah. 29. So, there's two ways that sequences can be defined. Explicit formula, recursive formula. You've got to do both on the AP exam. Now, we have formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences, but what happens if the, for the, the sequence is not arithmetic or geometric? Remember what we had to do last year? Powers one over Come on, you guys got to remember this. One over No, no, no. You have to rely on your mathematical prowess. prowess. Oh. So let's look at a few of those. You guys think you're good now, yeah? Because you're no. BC. Yeah. No. Dude, I think we should just take the test yeah, yeah. So that it's yeah, he was, he just got I'll give you an easy one. Yeah. Now, if you were in elementary school, the question would be, what would be the next term in this sequence? Yeah, where's Kiyama? Four, six, eight, ten. Four. So what's the pattern here? Oh, add four, four yeah. add six, add eight, add ten. So the next one will be add twelve, forty-two. Oh, yeah. break it into things. Yeah, but we are not in elementary Factor school. One, two. Anymore. The question four, is going to be, three, what is the one thousand term, or what yeah. is? Give me a formula for the nth term. Three, four. An explicit formula. Four, five. So here we go. I made this one easy. So the first thing you should do. Is try and see if you can break it down to something like one times two, two, one times two, oh. two times three, three times four, I see a pattern. four times five, five times six. Now, is there a pattern to this, or is yeah. these are just random numbers? Keep going. Keep going. There's a pattern. What's the pattern? How do you generate the numbers one, two, three, four? N. 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 How do you generate the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5? N plus 1. N plus one. And there you go. That's the explicit formula. But that's an easy one. Now, do you guys remember what we did last year when it's not so apparent? No. Well, very good. See, some of us are remembering things. You look at the differences. What are the, what's the difference between it? 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, what's the difference of those differences? 
two, 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 two. If it takes two levels to get down to this finite difference, N squared, then we know the formula is going to be a polynomial of degree two. So we know the formula is going to be like a n squared plus b n oh, plus c, right? This. And then what did we do last year? <laughs> we solved three equations, three variables. Have you no solved matrices? No, you know we're not going to use matrices. <laughs> we're going to use algebra. Have you solved? Okay, so in other words, if I plug in one into this formula, shouldn't I get the first term, which is two? So if I plug in a 1, you get a plus b plus c, you should get 2. If I plug 2 into this formula, I should get the second term of 6. So plug in 2 for n. 4a four four plus 2b plus c equals 6. Plug in 3, I should get 12. 9a plus 3b plus c equals 12. And then you just solve these equations. But it's easy because look, what is this minus this? 3a plus b equals 4. What's this minus this? 5a plus b equals 6. What's this minus this? 2a equal 2, a equal 1. Plug it back in there. b equal 1. Plug it back into here. c equal 0. So therefore, the formula was 1n squared plus 1n plus 0. Oh, that's like n times Isn't that the same thing as this? So, but see, but this is a mechanical way of figuring it out. Because some of us, the mathematical prowess is not as high as others, yeah? Mm -hmm. Where's Kyoma? Who's Ken? 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 Did he really so good at this? Yeah. You just yeah. look at Was him. he? Yeah, yeah remember you always asked him. Yeah, he was the he's only one that would quiet. answer in class. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. He, he was the... Yeah, you... What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what? Oh, what? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Three. You guys think you're... Okay, but here's another problem. What happens if you do the finite differences and you never come out to a finite difference? You know something. Then it's not polynomial. I have Kent and I'll Shh. Hey, one more remark. Bly is gone. He can't kick me out. Okay. Elementary school. What is the next term in the sequence? Okay, what's the pattern here? Multiply by one. Multiply by two. Multiply by three. Multiply by four. Multiply by five. So it will be multiplied by six, seven hundred twenty. Okay, but I want the explicit. You know, I'm serious. On the AP exam, you're gonna have to write the explicit formula for the sequence now. Okay, so what, Yoshida? There you go. A sub n equal n minus 1 factorial. Because look, 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3, 4 factorial, 5 factorial, 6 factorial, me. I knew you would write. <laughs> so is there a pattern to this? Yes, n minus 1 factorial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, that was like in the notes. Okay, do <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you guys think you're good now? No. Okay, let's kick it. Let's kick it up a small notch here. Shh. 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 I'm trying to concentrate. One. Negative two. Thirds. Positive three fifths. Negative four. This is not even that hard. It looks hard. No. Five ninths negative <laughs> one. <laughs> it's just increasing by yeah, one. It's just increasing by one. Oh, you know, what you probably want to do is make one run over one yeah. so you can see the pattern. Easy. So the first thing, it's going positive, negative, positive, negative. We call this negative. an alternating sequence. You guys remember how to make yeah. it alternate? Yes. And minus so, next squared. so it's either negative one to the n or n plus one. What do you think of this one? And if I plug in 1, n plus one I want to get a positive number, n plus one. so n plus 1. Now, when you have fractions, lots of times it's what easier to look at the numerator and denominator and separately. Yeah. So look at yeah. the numerator. Is there a pattern to this? 1, 2, 3, 4. Duh. Duh. Yeah, that's n. Now, what about the denominator? 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, those are the odd numbers. Common difference, 2. 2n. 2n and then adjust. Minus, minus, one. minus 1. See, you guys are better than you think. 
And we thought we were better than them. No, we did way harder problems than this in PC. Yeah. Don't we, we did way harder problems. Let's kick it up three notches. Nah, I want to say seven. Go ahead and ratio. Okay. Okay. Since he mentioned that, <laughs> wait. What was that? You see it and then you write it. Yeah. 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 Of course, the one, 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 two, two one. one. Yeah, I remember that. What was that called? You write a one, and you say one, one, and you go two, one, and then you get one, two, one, one. one. <laughs> okay. This is one of the most famous sequences in the history of the world. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. Spirals. This is the recursive formula for <laughs> <of> somebody. <laughs> so the first two terms are one and one. To get any term in the sequence, you add the two previous terms. That's how you read this thing, right? So to get this term, you add the two previous ones. Two. And then three. And then eight. Uh, Thirteen. Yeah, I, uh, that's Who's in nine? I heard of nine. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what if I were to ask you, find the 1,000th term? Right. Yeah. 1, yeah. Plug and chug. Keep on going, or yes, should I get the should I get the explicit formula? This is a test, yeah. Explicit. Okay, Yoshida. Oh yeah, it was. Wait, wait, wait! I want to call on somebody first. Oga, what is the explicit formula for the Fibonacci sequence, which is in the notes? In the sequence chapter in PCH, which I'm sure everybody read. Oh, 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 no, that's wrong because you got to factor out the uh, <laughs> 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 Wait, I'm back. Oh. Wow, that's and very impressive. Wasn't this on the PCH test? Yeah. Yes. Do you remember? Yeah. You just made it up. No, because on the PC, it's PCH test, remember I wrote this problem and I said, okay, here's the explicit formula. Find the 10th term. Oh, yeah. And people are trying to plug in 10. No, it's right now. So you just go like this. One, two, three, four. It's Wait, it's on video, Mr. Fork. You reviewed this answer. Who knows? He doesn't watch video. He told us we didn't need to do it. You put it on the chest. I remember that. Well, you told us we didn't approve it. Wait, did we even know that? We're at time. I don't even know how to prove it. You know how to prove it. Do it. Go to the show. Google it. All right. So, now, the last thing for sequences we gotta know is convergence and divergence of sequences. We did so many of these last year. Remember you had A through Z or something like that? Yeah. TCH homework? Okay, let's start off easy. If I give you a sequence, you gotta tell me whether it converges or diverges, and if it does converge, what does it converge to? Do you think you're good? Yeah. Okay, let's start off super easy. 2n plus 3, over 5n plus 7. Yes. Now, what does it mean if, if a sequence is going to converge? It basically means as n approaches infinity, the terms of this sequence get closer and closer to some number. What is that number? Two fifths. So we say this thing converges to two fifths. How come? Limit as. Yeah, yeah, I know, but why? Why is that? As in Because, yeah. As the. <laughs> when you find the limit as x or n approaches the limit, you're basically asking <laughs> putting as the graph goes on to the right. Well, if it has a horizontal asymptote, wouldn't that be the answer? Yes. Well, how do you find the horizontal asymptote of a rational function? Look at the coefficient. If the degree of the top and the bottom are the same, you look at the coefficient, boom! <laughs> They only take effect out. Okay, now you think you're good, yeah? Yeah. yeah. B sub n is equal to cosine inverse. <laughs> cosine inverse 2n plus 3 all over n squared plus 1. So cosine inverse of 0. Well, as n approaches infinity, so don't look at this cosine inverse, just look at what's in the zero. You okay. draw the arrow, make it zero. It's a degree. <laughs> <laughs> no. It goes to zero. Very good. So now you just have to figure out what's cosine inverse zero. Pi over two. Pi over two is correct. So this sequence converges to pi over two. You guys got to get used to these words, converge and diverge now. 
optics. Okay, so the easiest thing is when you have a rational function, right? Because you just look at the degree at the top and the bottom. Okay, but then now we gotta, you got to know your base graphs, remember? Oh. Remember that chapter? Okay, there. Let me call, let me call on somebody. Trev? It's an S. S. Oh. oh, so what's the answer? S. S. Think of the graph. Five. Like if I were to draw the graph to the board. Power two. Did you feed him that? No. Yes, you did. Oh, you love it. Did you just give a thumbs, thumbs up? up? You gave him a thumbs up? Yeah. yeah. So with a different finger? <laughs> yes. With a different finger? <laughs> I can't even imagine she's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> then you can awesome. Okay, here. Let me draw the graph of 10 <laughs> inverse for you. Because some of you going, pi over 2, where's that coming from? The S. That's not even an S. <laughs> As the graph is going up to no, the right, the y coordinates are getting closer and closer to what number? S. Pi over 2, because that's the horizontal asymptote. Basically, when you're finding the limit as n approaches infinity, you're asking for what is the horizontal asymptote? If, well, if there is one. Rising sun. You guys think you're good? Yeah. Yeah. Rising sun. D sub n is equal to sine n. Okay, let me call on somebody else. Ishihara. Ishihara's over there. I know he's over there. Oh. Trying to pick up people. <laughs> think of the graph. As the graph is going out to the right, um, does not exist. There you go. The limit does not. Okay, the oh. limit does not exist. That's. But oh, there's a you gotta look at the directions. Okay, the directions. Green girls. This sequence does not diverges. But if if the if the question was compute the limit of this sequence, then you would say it doesn't exist. You guys understand? Yeah. And then when a sequence diverges, there could be several ways it could diverge. It could diverge to infinity. But this one doesn't diverge to infinity because the graph is just oscillating back and forth. So they just say it diverges. You get it? Oh, you think you're good now, yeah? Sign n over n. How many times have we done Remember I told you to just friends. this one? No. OK, just read it. Love a child. What is it? Zero. Very good. This sequence converges oh, to zero. Down. Why? Oh, this is not friend. Yeah. So the exactly. Friend is when you take the limit as n approaches infinity, but that we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> 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 oh, what did I say? <laughs> what? <laughs> limit is <laughs> friend. <laughs> Making me look bad. <laughs> we don't have to. Do it. Friend is when you take the limit as n approaches zero. Oh. We are taking the limit as n approaches infinity. That's what we're doing. Anyway, so yes, the sine graph oscillates back and forth. But what happens? You keep dividing by bigger and bigger numbers. Remember we drew this graph last yeah. year. So it looks like this. So as the graph goes out to the right, the amplitude is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So even though it's oscillating back and forth, it is getting closer and closer to zero. So it converges to zero. Did you Go home to work. Okay, wait, I'm just reviewing all the ones that we learned last year, people. F sub n equals is it parametric? n over n plus 1 to the nth power. Okay, let me call it somebody on this side. Love it. Impress me. Lomi, lomi. Oh my gosh, please don't. Don't give hints. Hooli, hooli. One more hint, and that's it. Kevin Black's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Life out of here. <laughs> what does this converge to, or, or does it diverge? Uh, Work the pit. I'll give you a hint. Mm. Zero. No. Okay, look. <laughs> if you didn't have this nth power there, what would be this? What's the, what's the limit of that? Zero. No. If Wait, the degree what? of the top one. and the bottom are the same, you look at the coefficients. Oh, yeah, one. Okay, so one to any power is one then, right? Mm. Yes, if the power is a is a finite number, but, but this is one to infinity. infinity. This is the one to e the to infinity. The this is an indeterminate limit. Remember we did that in the beginning? So, okay, do I need to write down all the indeterminate forms? Zero infinity over zero. Infinity <laughs> over infinity. One to the infinity. Infinity minus infinity, and infinity times zero. 
These are the indeterminate cases. Oh, yeah. like, you don't know what it is, so you got to figure it out. Now this one you got to remember. You got to know me, and sometimes you got to even know me. Okay, does this look familiar, people? The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus box, box over n to the nth power, power is e box to the box. 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 Not box to the box. <laughs> e to the box. So, it's what you need to do no is you need to <laughs> massage this and hooli it even sometimes to make it look like that. So, what can I do to make it look like that? Boomerang. You hooli it. Oh, that's can boomerang. I, can I just hooli it? Negative. No, you gotta put the negative in the exponent. And then, can I lift and separate? Look, it's starting to take shape. Look. But, Mr. Park, there's only n there. There's a negative sign. So just move the negative out there like that. That's called lomi lomi. That's called boomerang. So, look at the thing in the brackets. What's the limit of this thing in the brackets? E to the 1, right? Whatever number that is, that's the power of e. e to the 1. But then it gets raised to the negative 1. So it converges to 1 over e. And remember in PCH, I kept telling you guys, this one comes up in PC so often. Just memorize the thing. It just came up once. <laughs> well, <laughs> believe me, you're going to see it. This chapter, the <laughs> next chapter, you're going to see it a lot. So it's up to you. If you want to keep reinventing the wheel, then keep reinventing. No. <laughs> Okay, you guys think you're good? N squared over e to the n. Don't say anything. Hui. Oh, hui Sarah. N to the n fapple. Yes. Oh yeah. So what's the answer? That only It's like saying friend. It's actually boomerang. Um, uh, the one on the bottom is bigger. So it goes to either zero or infinity. Okay, you got the hardest part. <laughs> Is it zero? Yeah. Okay, okay. If the look, this function grows faster than that function, I so doesn't it make sense it converges to zero? We. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know <laughs> e sub n? How do you know that e to the x or e to the n grows faster than n, no. n to the no. n to the n fepple? Mr. Yates class, you guys learned to that couple? No, we're not supposed to, did you? Should have known. Did you guys use the same notes I had? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah they used your packet. They just used okay, your packet. Then, then the answer is yes, then But well, what are notes? Okay, this tells you the hierarchy of functions that go to infinity in the classes. N to the N is the fastest <laughs> one we have. It looks like this. No, think of the sequence end to the end. Like some of you, what are you talking about? What does he want? Look at the sequence end to the end. What are the first five terms? One to the one. Take the first one. one. Two to the two. Three to the three. Four to the four. Five to the five. Three thousand one hundred twenty-five. Wait, I'm doing the wrong thing. Six to the six. No. <laughs> what, what? What is six to the four? Hey Siri. Twelve ninety-six times thirty-six. Let's just put 12 and 6 Mr. Park, the thing getting big really fast. Yes, it goes. <laughs> it goes to infinity very quickly. F is factorial. Okay, let's look at factorial. What are the first few terms? Two factorial, two factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four. Five factorial, six factorial, seven factorial, four. It's growing fast, but not quite as fast as this one. So factorial, if you were to draw the graph, it's like that. Oh, I see. Exponential functions. Get a pattern. Like in, see, last, last year, I bet some of you didn't even know what an exponential function is. It's a number to, a, to the x power. You know, like, two, well, let's use n. 5 to the n, 2 to the n, e to the n. You want another example, 10 to the n. How about? These are, I to the these are exponential functions. They grow very quickly too, <laughs> but not as quickly as factorial. What does P stand for? Polynomial. Polynomial. See, that's why it's the N to a number power, like N, N squared, N cubed. You want another example? N to the 4. How about N to the E? Okay, N to the E. How about N to the I? No. <laughs> that's an idea. So polynomial functions grow not as fast, and then last one, logarithmic functions, they're very slow growing. 
So when both the top and the bottom both go into infinity, n to the n tuple is the tool to use. So let's just do one more. H sub n, H sub n is uh, uh, n factorial over sh n cubed. Okay, the limit is infinity, but the, does this function converge or diverge? Diverge. It diverges, but specifically, it diverges to infinity. Now, like I said, there's different ways of uh, something can diverge. It could go to infinity or it could just simply diverge like that because it just oscillates back and forth. So is, th is this all coming back? It was already here. Good. Okay, I mean, that's back with that. We go over there, we're going home. Go to lunch. Oh, wait. I want to give you a preview so you come to school tomorrow. I mean, on Monday. Wait, it's Friday. I mean Tuesday. Oh. You know what we're gonna learn next? L'Hopital's rule. Oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> and then after that, this is what's what's gonna happen. This is really interesting. What would happen if you have like the graph of y equal one over x squared? No, I changed my mind. One over x. It looks like this, right? From one to infinity. It keeps on going forever. Now. What's the area? What is the area of that region? No, the infinity. integral. No, of course. Oh, yeah, so it would be the integral from, let's say that's one. One to infinity of one over x dx, right? But what is that? How do you compute that? You take the limit as x approaches zero. I mean, well, what would you guess? Is that an infinite area or a finite area? Finite. finite. No, it's infinite. 50-50 wow. <laughs> chance we couldn't get it. But here's, uh, we're going to actually show this next on uh, um, Wednesday, I guess, or something. What would happen if you take this region and revolve it about the x-axis? Like that. Finite. You're going to get this infinitely long golf tee. Finite. Is finite. the volume finite. of that golf <laughs> tee infinite or finite? Finite. finite? finite. How do you know? Because of that snowflake. Because of that snowflake. No, it's a, it depends on this function. 50 50. So, no, it's not. It's not a rule. <laughs> Stop, stop the video already. I got you, I'll stop you. Okay, so the first test, the average was 8 sit-up. 87. And then on the calculator test, it was 9.5.